It was a heartless operation. The doctor injected the drug in such a way that he used an electric drill, and the boy screamed in pain and struggled. But the doctor doesn't care if it's saving lives or killing people. His name is Eli, and has been allergic to air since he was a child. And when he touches it, he has trouble breathing and fastering. That's why he's lived an isolated life all these years. Even when he went out, he had to wear a special protective suit to do so. In order to cure his strange disease, his parents spent all their savings before they inquired about a famous doctor who said he could cure his strange disease. So the family packed their bags and drove to that hospital. While traveling, the boy noticed a creepy girl on the side of the road looking at him. Before he has time to think much, he arrives at the so-called hospital. It was actually more like an old castle. Soon they meet the famous doctor. The doctor told them that his strange disease could be completely cured in just three sessions and that there was no need to wear protective clothing here because the air was purified. At this moment, the boy seems to notice something strange. A little girl appears at the end of the corridor, but then disappears. When he arrived at the ward, the doctor said that it was a sterile environment and that he could take off his gown without worry. Encouraged by his mother, the boy was relieved and finally breathed in the fresh air he had not seen for a long time. The mother prepares some new clothes and fantasizes about a better life ahead. The father, however, looked sad. In the middle of the night, Eli was lying in bed tossing and turning when he heard a noise coming from the window. When he got up to check it out, he realized it was the sound of mosquitoes outside the house hitting the glass. But then he heard a gasp and a white mist appeared on the glass next to him. As if it was someone who was puffing towards the glass, the sudden appearance of Paul Prince scared him so much that he rushed to his mother's room. The next day, Eli told the doctor about last night's encounter. However, the doctor replied calmly that it was just a side effect of the medication and that hallucinations were normal. Eli was then taken to the operating room for the first stage of treatment. The doctor told Eli that the root cause of the allergy was a problem with the antibodies, which are produced by bone marrow stem cells. So the medicine had to be injected into the bone marrow. The nurse then immobilized Eli's limbs, made holes in his legs, and injected him with the medication, perhaps prompted by the drug. Eli was horrified to see a ghostly figure reflected in the mirror. But immediately afterward, he passed out under the effects of the anesthetic. When the boy awoke, it was the next morning. At this time, there was once again a strange noise coming from the window, and the boy fixed his eyes to see that someone was smashing the glass, and it was none other than the little girl he had seen on the road earlier. The girl's name was Lily, and she seemed to know everything about what had happened to the boy. On his way out, Lily reminds him to be careful of the doctors here, as sudden noise comes from the room late at night, only to see the door of the closet slowly open, and something seems to be under the curtain in the mirror's reflection. Driven by curiosity, the boy plucks up the courage to go up and look, yet there is nothing, and he tries to communicate with the ghost by hazing a mist on the glass and writing his name. But then the order of the letters changed and became the word lie. As if implying something, the boy panicked a little and backed away in fear, bumping into the cabinet door behind him. The ghost of the little girl appeared, and the boy turned back in a hurry, but there was nothing behind him. The next second, when the boy came to his senses, there were only his parents around him. Yet the doctor's explanation is still the same. It's a drug-induced hallucination. Soon the boy entered the second stage of treatment. This time, the operation was extremely painful. The boy was tied to the operating table, then fixed his head. The doctor shaved off a handful of hair on the top of his head, then took an electric drill and made a hole in the boy's head, then injected the drug into it. The boy was in instant agony and drifted into unconsciousness. The parents waited anxiously outside. The next night, the boy just came to the toilet. The light suddenly went out, followed by the ghostly figure reappeared. Scared him hurriedly hide in the closet, but the ghostly figure is still banning against the closet, until his parents rushed in at the sound of the ghostly figure disappeared. Looking at the series of numbers on the closet, it also made the boy more sure that what had happened recently was not a hallucination. Since his parents didn't believe him, he had to tell the girl about it. The girl told him when she heard the numbers that it was probably a code. The boy was suddenly aligned, so that night, he sneaked to a big door, where there was indeed a combination lock. After entering the code, he discovered that it was an archive room, where he also found a shocking secret. So he came to the archive room to investigate, and indeed he found the end. The medical records are some of the children receiving treatment, but everyone after the third stage of the operation died strangely, and the death is extremely horrific. The boy instantly breaks down and accidentally knocks over his glass of water, the noise drawing everyone to him. At this point, the boy can't believe anyone. He locks himself into a room and also finds a photo in the room and realizes that all the doctors here are nuns. Suddenly, a fly comes and following the fly's directions, he finds a secret room which is already outside the hospital. The boy begins to breathe badly, and unexpectedly, he is locked in by the doctor just as he walks in. The boy instantly becomes agitated while the sickness rears its ugly head and he soon passes out. When he wakes up, he is surprised to find himself unharmed. It turns out that the reason Eli just fainted was because the drug his father had injected him with had worked. Eli finally realized that it was all a lie and that he was not sick at all. 
Eli yells out why he lied to him. Mom hears her son's shouts and comes to the cellar as well. Unexpectedly, Eli directly pretended to be dead. Lord his mom to open the door, then knocked her out and took the opportunity to escape. Upon awakening, mom realizes that what her son knocked her out with was actually a dagger, which puts her in deep thought when she pushed open the cover in front of her. She was shocked to find the bodies of three children inside. The mother also finally realized that what her son had previously said was true. Stage 3, the son must die. On the other hand, Eli was still captured by them and the crowd savagely tied Eli to the operating table. That's when the mother appears behind the nun with a knife and tries to free her son. The father, who had stepped aside, took the knife, turned around and handed it to the doctor. Immediately afterward, the doctor begins chanting a spell in front of the little boy. It turned out that these were not doctors at all, but a group of nuns who believed in Jesus. Just as the nuns were about to stab the knife down, the knife stopped in midair. It wouldn't go in any way. And then next second, the boy took control of the nun and plunged the knife into herself. The boy then fought his way out of all the restraints on his body. At this moment, his entire body was red. Even his eyes turned crimson. With the boy's roar, all the objects and people around him were shaken off. And then the nuns were hoisted up to launch themselves at their mother. What the hell is going on here? Looking at the boy who was gradually losing control, the mother also told the truth. It turned out that the boy was not sick at all, but was in fact the son of the devil, Satan, and had come here only to purify his soul. At the end of the story, the boy left everyone except his mother in the fire, and waiting for him outside the door was the girl from before. It turns out that she is also the daughter of Satan, who is now going to take her away, but the boy doesn't choose to go with her, choosing instead to stay with his mother. He finally regains his good nature, and the demonic power in his body is purified.